Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Bacterio Space Exploration without any space so far. It's been a frustrating few hours of play I have to admit. Um, I feel like I've been doing enormous quantities of firefighting and trying to just force my way through um, combat. So there we go and there's a bing to tell me if something's been blown up. Where is it? Down here. Okay. So what a... Um, I, in the last episode, I, I realised I was very, very low on copper. Um, so I wasn't. Um, it's, it's building all these, all these facilities up to produce circuits. That's a massive drain on the copper supply. The, uh, the green circuits over there, the red circuits over here. So that was using up all of the copper, and I just didn't have enough coming in, not by a long shot. As you can see, that's now. Oh goodness sake! That's now mostly fixed. Um, there is now about enough copper ore coming in because I built this extra mine down here. So there's now two of them, and it seemed, that seems to be okay. But building this one was an absolute nightmare. There was biter bases all the way across here, essentially, and they were big enough that I was really struggling to get through them. I ended up going, um, do, doing sort of a combination of attacking them with tanks and rockets and hiding behind turrets and stuff like that. I even ended up building out an entire string of turrets going all the way over practically to the water over here from the edge of this 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 base once I got it once I got it established. It just took forever and I think I'm at that awkward position in um in a factorio playthrough where the biters have now got difficult. So right at the beginning they're quite easy because you've got you've probably got a submachine gun, they're sending in the tiny little biters and it's not too bad. You can you can deal with them fairly easily. Then they get a bit harder. You've got the bases to deal with, but you get turrets and you learn to turret creep, and it's not too bad. And you can more or less do that. Then it gets to the point now where the bases are the um, bited bases are actually quite tough. I can't find I can't find any that are inside my radar, unfortunately. Um, but they've got they tend to have large numbers of uh, of spawners, lots of lots of fairly big worms. And the problem is when they've got enough spawners. If you run in there and lob off a couple of rockets at them, all the biters in that base then charge you, and you need a really big, solid load of walls to hold, uh, uh, sorry, turrets to hold them off. Like you need probably about 10 turrets to to get rid of the uh, the wave of biters that comes in because you poked the nest. And so, and that also means you can only actually shoot off a couple of rockets, maybe maybe four rockets um, before you have before you have to run away and hide. Otherwise, the biters come running over and get, and just swarm you and you die. The tank isn't much better because when you when you're running around with the tank, I don't know whether it's a space exploration thing or this particular planet or this seed or this area, but it feels like everywhere is very very rocky. Uh, there's a lot of there's enormous numbers of rocks and cliffs just all over the place. So as you tr look, look look down here, there's a uh, this is an area I haven't I haven't basically haven't touched. So there's a string of cliffs running down here. There's a load of these big rocks that are they're not. They won't seriously damage the tank, and if you drive into them, they'll probably shatter, and you can drive then drive on. But driving into them will stop the tank dead, and then you get swarmed by biters, and then you can't move, and then your tank gets destroyed. So you can't do the sort of the circling around them, shelling them, uh, while they chase you in a big long train, because you'll probably hit a rock, and then they'll eat you. So <laughs> it's been rather difficult. Oh... After enormous quantities of, um, of effort, though, I have finally managed to um, make this base, this 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 mine, pretty much safe. Uh, and a part of that is that there's a lot of turrets all the way around it. And with my new, with my current design, I'm actually I was quite pleased with how the um, how the one one RoboPort mine thing works worked out. Because as you can see, it's, it's packed full of um, solar panels, but that is enough to keep the uh, the mine running flat out, even when it when even when a train's just been in. So that's working well. And because it's all surrounded in a single RoboPort catchment area, I've got this chest here that's got some spare turrets, spare walls, spare grabbers, extra poles, and so on. And oh, and a load of repair packs as well. Now, it, it is getting through its supplies because the turrets are getting destroyed from time to time. But it means when I want to tweak it a little bit, I can put in that that piece of wall I put in earlier. I can just do that remotely and then the, and the bots are there with the stuff to fly in. I put in an extra turret down here because this one came under attack and got destroyed. So the bots will place that for me. In fact, let's put another two in there as well. I've got I've got plenty of them, and then it'll just automatically load it from the um, from the uh, from the belt. So this is actually working really well. I'm quite I'm, I'm happy with that. The problem, <laughs> to be negative again, the problem I ran into with the, with building these up. Yeah, so I, I, I swooped in um, with with a uh, came in built built railway line by by hand or by file or by bot. You just generally, I, I, I built it anyway, um, enough to get to get my train in here with loads of supplies. 
slap down the um, the robo port and a chest for it and and some power and some uh, solar panels to get it started. So that was that was okay. It got got it going. The problem was then night fell. There weren't very many accumulators, so there wasn't enough power to keep the robo port running overnight. So the 50 or so bots I dumped in here all went. Oh, that RoboPort stopped, uh, is, isn't powered anymore. Let's go somewhere else. And they all just flew off back over here, back to my main base, because that was where the nearest powered RoboPort was. And I was sitting there going, what? This is ridiculous. I need those bots to build the build the, build the mine up. So I, I, I ended up running backwards and forwards, getting, just getting more bots. And that was, that was pretty ridiculous. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to have to have a think about that and come up with a better way to do it. So I've got a blueprint now in... At least I thought I did. Goodness knows what I've done with it. I'm still not quite 100% sure how um, how blueprints work in this game and how it manages them. I've got my yellow belt balancers here, so that's that's a start in, in this book. But I made a blueprint of, essentially, of this... With the few, with the sort of slightly more sparse turrets, and it was it was the stations and the belts and turrets and things and, and the wall around the edge. So basically, the outside shell of it, with the idea being, I would then dump in solar panels anywhere there was an obvious gap, and then dump and put in the miners afterwards. Uh, once I got all the solar panels up to power them, so they didn't just leech all of the power and cause all the bots to fly off so that's so hopefully this is going to this is going to work reasonably well i just need to obviously just need to put down a lot more solar panels maybe sort of two or three complete rows across here uh in this area where i don't expect there to be any ore because then i can drop in the the ore miners a bit further across one slight mistake i have made here is the alignment of these um of this last row of miners is up against the uh, the belt here, which means the power poles then have to be on the other side of it, which is a bit silly and means I need kind of need to go in and do that manually or maybe, but it it, it basically works. I'm I am actually pleased with the basic design here. It's 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 really quite easy to plop this down and just get it working. So that's 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 nice. I do kind of want to get switch over from using um, solar power to hot steam as I said in the last episode if I can bring it in from a nuclear power plant the steam will come in at about 5 million degrees centigrade or whatever it is and that will produce quite a lot of power I've, I've, I've heard I've, I've read about that being the way that some people do this so I'd, I'd quite like to try that okay so there was as I said there was a lot of that I still haven't built up the extra um, oil mine that I was planning to do because I just haven't had time and brain space that's pr probably going to want to claim this patch down here which means i'm going to need to work on this um cluster of, of nests probably this one and this one and maybe even these as well i don't know we'll go in and see how that goes uh but that's going to be a bit of a faff but on a happier note i've started building up my um blue circuits uh over here so this is this is actually on the base catchment area uh just so i've got the bots flying back and forth across here building it up very very slowly because it's a million miles away but that's okay i'm happy to leave that just just running for now because it's easier than than going trying to guess what what parts i'm going to need and then running in with them in, in a train and dumping them to a chest and hoping for the best it also means that i don't have to worry about running out of power and if the bots bugger off back to the base then it's okay because they're still in the uh, in the coverage area so um, yeah, this is getting built up fairly slowly. I actually did some maths for this, uh, which is kind of terrifying because there's lots of it. So I was thinking about ratios and how, how and uh, how to produce this. So my my green circuit factory over here, I base this on um, pulling in one one belt of copper into each of these and then this, this is the right number of machines in order to to get through one belt of copper the the stone doesn't get used up quite as quickly so that's that there's an excess of that but that's fine i don't i don't mind there being too much this is this is designed so that in theory it will use up one belt of copper <clears throat> and out of curiosity let's have a look so uh, if i can remember how to use to play this game one belt of copper will produce two belts of cables which will produce uh, two thirds of a belt of, of um, electronic circuits. Okay, so we've got we've got a belt of copper going in, two thirds of a belt of green circuits coming out. So it's, it's not quite one to one. There's not quite six belts of, of green circuits coming out here. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's 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 running at quite a nice ratio, and obviously this is all full because I haven't started using it yet. So that's that's absolutely fine for now. Um, 
it's, it's all even, so we should, in theory, I've not put any balances in. Oh no, I have. I've, I've balanced the input, so that should 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 keep running okay, and just keep all of these full. So that that should be okay. Then over here with the red circuits, it looks like um, green circuits and red circuits. When you make them at the same, when you make enough red circuits to use up a, the the quantity of green circuits that are being produced, which I'm not quite doing actually. This isn't running quite fast enough which is interesting is that because this, this isn't a for some reason these are all assembly machine ones <laughs> goodness sake right okay so that's why that's not running quite as nicely as it should um, I'm gonna fix that now because that's really stupid um, I did get that right didn't I yes one to two all of this Stop being bloody stupid. <laughs> Upgrade to the, the better assembly machines. Including you guys. Right. Okay, that should now be balanced because I think I did again did the maths. So we've got the, we've got eighteen assembly machines here running off uh, make, making red circuits, because red circuits take two green circuits each and take six seconds, whereas green circuit takes half a second, so you need uh I reckoned 18. I, I, as I said, I, I tried to do the numbers. So yeah, three green circuits every five, every half a second, means that one of these, which has three green circuit machines in it, is producing three green circuits. Sorry, six green circuits per second. That's enough to make three red circuits per second, which needs 18 machines to do it. So that's why there's 18 on each of these columns, and that uses about the the other half of the belt. Um, these belts are only half full. I need to fix that as well. So that's that's good. The next one up is blue circuits. Now, blue circuits take load. I haven't put the blue circuit stuff down here yet. This is just these the uh, the green and red circuits for the blue circuits. So, right, one blue circuit takes 20 green circuits, and um, and two red circuits and some acid. But that's not a problem. Uh, I can make that quickly. So that means. Um, so, 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 and the red circuit takes two greens, plastic and copper. Um, and it takes 10 seconds to make it as well. So I did some of the ra ratios here, and I reckon that for every... We'll turn into 1.2 blue circuits per second. God, none of my trains is screwing up. Uh, oh no, 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 no. Where has it gone? Right, so I'm having all kinds of trials and tribulations with my... Yeah, you should not be doing that. Just stop. Right. The other thing, the other problem I'm having... <laughs> I'll get back to that in a second. Right, so as I was saying, this is going to make 1.2 blue circuits per second, which I'll feed out to a station here, and it'll take approximately a million years to fill it up. Um, but Cella V, I might, I, I'll, I'll see how it goes. I may in, end up needing to just make another copy of this. But by the time I do, I will then have either art, I will then have artillery, and it'll make that'll make clearing spaces out a lot easier. So, <laughs> the next stage of what I was talking about, going back to the combat for a moment. The um, the reason I'm having trouble with the combat is because I don't have artillery and I don't have nukes. The problem is. Artillery is gated behind yellow science, also known as utility, which is gated behind blue circuit boards. So I've been, all of this effort has been to making the has been going towards making the blue circuit boards, so that I can make the yellow science, so that I can make the artillery, so that I can actually liberate some some room to build my factory out from the biters that are absolutely everywhere. <laughs> so and once I've done that, I'll then also be able to use these sciences to them carry on with and actually get on to the, the space nonsense as well uh, which at the mo moment is proven difficult this will also get me the logistics system which is another thing i, I really rather want uh, nuclear weapons or atomic bombs as they're called here uh, that requires utility science and it requires purple science so you know that's going to be even further off but I'm, I'm i'm getting there i'm getting there i'm just focusing on artillery first <laughs> uh, the other problem i've had as i sort of hinted at when i looked at one of these areas here no, this seems to be okay. I've, I've got a big problem with um, with the wrong 
stuff coming on the wrong on the wrong belts and just being unloaded in the wrong place. So, I mean, LTN is supposed to be quite good about this sort of thing. It's supposed to only get it's supposed to go off, get a train full of the thing you want, and unload that entire train full somewhere else where it's needed. Now that works brilliantly until one of these chests, until it turns out the chests are all full and the train can't unload. It then times out and goes back to the goes back to the depot with some stuff in it like this one and this one. Then the train goes, oh, I've got some, uh, and, and then the train doesn't realise it's got some stuff, so it goes, oh, here's another job. It goes off, it picks up a load of copper ore, for example, and then unloads it all, unloads the copper ore and the detritus that was in there before, in this case stone bricks, bang, into the um, into the station and everything's polluted and you're, you're sat there going, oh my god, what is all this stuff doing here? Why is nothing working? So I spent what felt like a million years declogging my... Um, red circuit production facility up here because some iron got into it. There's, even, there's a little bit of it left there. I haven't quite got all of it but at this point I don't care because that's actually able to run and keep building everything so <sighs> it is all it is all running just about so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to touch that for now. So the fix for this and what I should have been doing all along is putting filter inserters on all of the unloading stations like this. So this means a train rocks up with a mixture of copper plates and, I don't know, steel or bricks or whatever in there. The, tr the uh, station will only actually unload the stuff it wants. It won't get as much of this, the, that as it should because half the space in the train is taken up with rubbish, but at least it's not going to pollute your, all, all your belts. So I am gradually working through. I've, all of these have been done. Um, all of these are being done as it gets built, so that's great. I haven't done over here yet. These are all green inserters still instead of white ones, which is why all this is full of the wrong stuff. So I need to go over there and clean all, clean all these out, upgrade all of the inserters, and then hopefully things will start running again nicely. I might even need to look into balancing a bit here because goodness knows why it's, uh, oh, some of these are running and some of them aren't. It's, you know, it's just a bit of a mess. Um, I was hoping not to need the balancers because in theory this should be perfectly balanced as all things should be except when you've got this it sort of throws it off a bit um, because it's all even you, you should you unload a train of one thing it goes through gets smelted fills up all the all the things on the other side oh I've got iron on the, oh my god I've got iron in this side as well oh <laughs> right it, it's a mess it's a horrible horrible mess I need to go over there and, and yeah okay so Learn from me here. If you're using LTN, do use the filter inserters. Otherwise, you're just going you're going to regret it sooner or later. It's going to go wrong at some point. Uh, the other thing I did wrong, I think, that made it even worse, was I used iron chests along here, and they and so in fact there's one in there. There's a few of these I haven't upgraded yet. So they're not as big. They only have um, 32 stacks instead of 48. So if the train unloading hasn't been quite as balanced as you'd hope. It's relatively it, that it, then the, that's when the chests overload. The train doesn't unload. The chain train doesn't unload properly. Everything goes horribly wrong. So yeah, two things I've learned from this. One is just use the filter inserters from the get go. They're not that. They're not exactly expensive. They only co they cost them like three green circuits more. And by the time you're making stack inserters, you've probably got lots and lots of green circuits anyway. So just just don't mess around with it. Go in, use filters. It doesn't take that long to set them up. Also, use steel chests, they're bigger, and that means they're better. <laughs> Those are my tips for LTN. Oh, right, this has been a very negative episode. I've spent the entire episode complaining about stuff. Um, oh no, no, apart from, I said I said that my, um, my, my one, one robot port mine work design is working quite well. Uh, and my blue circuit production I'm quite pleased with, and I enjoy doing the maths really, honest gov. Um, it's just the rest of it that's been complaints. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, please come back and join me for my next e next episode. I promise to try not to complain quite as much in that one. Um, but hopefully, some of those things, some of those things I've been complaining about, have been useful and they've they've taught you a bit. Maybe you've learned. Maybe you can now learn from my pain and just use the bloody filter inserters in the first place, <laughs> um, and learn to and see how how much fun it is to try and rush artillery just so you can clear everything out <laughs> oh, i think that'll do for now thank you for watching i'll see you in the next episode where i um will hopefully have all of these stack inserters oh, i've got 150 of them that'll do uh, that'll that's a good start for going out and uh, setting things up 
uh, hopefully by then everything will be working nicely and I'll be able to say look how good it is now I've got stack inserters everywhere. <sighs> Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.